Hey guys, when you're dealing with vining houseplants, one of the first questions and one of the most important questions you have to ask yourself is whether or not to stake uh, your plant, encouraging a plant to climb versus letting it sort of hang around is not always a simple question. There can be some pretty interesting consequences depending on what you choose to do in terms of how the plant will grow and ultimately how it will look. I'm going to explain what you should typically expect if you choose to stake your houseplant up versus just letting it hang. I'm also going to share some really important tips when it comes to climbing and hanging houseplants, so listen out for those. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler, and if you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, or better yet, you can subscribe to my channel. I recently acquired two new philodendrons right here in front of me, a uh, philodendron micans, also known as a velvet leaf. And this one here is a philodendron brantinium, also known as philodendron brandy. As you can see, this one came staked and this one did not. While there's only a really one way to let your houseplant hang, albeit if it's in a hanging basket or in a pot on a shelf, now, if you do choose to let it be free and go wild, there are some pretty interesting things you can do to ensure that you have a less leggy plant. And all that means is a plant that is, you know, more than just one or two really long vines coming out of that basket or um, pot. And I'm going to be sharing some of those tips. But I want to start with climbing because it's actually slightly more consequential. So there are many ways to encourage your plant to climb. Obviously, we touched on the fact that this guy has been staked, but alternatively, you could be using a cedar board, a moss pole, your wall. I mean, there are options are a trellis are uh, a lot more there's a lot more variety when it comes to the way in which you get your plant to climb but what a lot of folks don't understand especially when it comes to philodendron is by getting your plant to climb you are triggering a biological response in the plant and basically, you're allowing the plant to send a signal replicating what it's trying to do in nature. Okay, so what signal am I talking about? Well, by getting the plant to climb, you've therefore accomplished its first goal in life, which is simply to climb. And that is going to trigger its second goal in life, which is to grow and mature. Maturity in philodendron means some very specific things. As the plant climbs and grows, the vines will become thicker and bigger, and in turn, the leaves will actually get quite a bit bigger. And the amazing thing is, some mature philodendron will actually, as they grow and as they are climbing and maturing, some of the leaves will begin to fork, and if you are having trouble imagining what that is, you can think of a Monstera deliciosa with the forked leaves, especially as that plant matures as well. They become more forked and there's more sort of holes and division to the leaf. So if you're interested in having your vining philodendron sort of stay on the smaller side, then letting it hang is totally the way to go. Typically by not allowing the plant to climb means that you're avoiding those things that come along with a maturing philodendron. Regardless of what you choose to do, one isn't better than the other, one's not worse than the other, it's totally up to you to choose whether or not you want your philodendron to climb or be hanging in a basket. And maybe it's a function of where you intend to keep 
your new plant or the space that you have intended for it. Now, hanging plants uh, like this philodendron micans that I have here can become leggy with just one or a few vines coming out of them. All right, so if you want something that is a little bit less leggy and more full, there are things you can do. So this guy uh, does look a little bit leggy, but for the size of this container, it is looking pretty full. However, once I repot this guy, it will look a lot less full. Sorry, my dog's just drinking some water. But um, what you can do to create a more fulsome plant is when the plant is obviously large enough, you can take cuttings and you can add those cuttings back to the original pot or basket. So when you're doing that, what you're going to want to do when you're taking a cutting is take something um, that is just below um, the nodes and you can see these aerial roots uh, have grown quite a bit actually on this. So you're gonna want something that has a leaf or two and then you're gonna wanna take a cutting just below um, these nodes and then that way they can develop their roots. So like I said, you know, if you want a hanging basket, that's great. Um, if you want something that's a little bit fuller, then you can take cuttings and then put those cuttings back into the original um, container that you have to get a fuller look. Now on the climbing side, there are some advantages to using a cedar board or a more substantial moss pole. Basically those options compared to something like a stake, you're providing more surface area for the plant, multiple vines, and ultimately the plant's aerial roots to grip onto that board or moss pole and really sort of hook in and you know, I think that's just gonna kind of accelerate the whole maturity and maturing process. Now, when you are going to, in my case, either change or increase the stake size or add some sort of cedar board or moss pole, it's really important that you repot the plant uh, because that way you can insert the stake or insert the board, whatever you're choosing to use without sort of piercing and ruining any of the roots. Um, so I'm actually going to be repotting very quickly these two plants up right now and I'll show you uh, the soil mix I'm using and how to do that uh, right now. All right, so I'm gonna be using a peat moss and perlite mix and I'm using some terracotta pots. When you're using terracotta, they can pull the moisture away, which can be a good or bad thing. It just means that you need to keep a little bit of a closer eye on your soil moisture and watering. Um, Make sure that this is a two foot bamboo stake. So just make sure that you throw that in there. Um, let's try that. Um, and yeah, let's get this guy repotted. So oh, yeah, you can see that there are actually some roots uh, coming out of the bottom, which is a good sign and means that it's probably a good time to uh, repot it. This one has a little tie. So maybe I'll actually reuse that with this stake. Um, all right, so let's get rid of this post. Gentle squeeze. All right, so it does seem like it might be a little bit rebound and that's why. Just taking an extra second to, oh, there we go very carefully. All right, so look at those roots. Woo. All right, so just carefully kind of hold that. It's almost like a two-man job, but I can make it work. Okay, so see, there we go. We'll just press that on there. Hold this kind of where you want it. And then add some of the new mix. All right, so once it's stabilized, then you're probably, there we go. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more soil. 
Oh, man down. All right, so let's see. Seems like it's somewhat stable right now. Let's see if I can just tie this on. All right, there we go. Let's see if I can push this down a little bit. So, like I explained by doing it this way, you know, you're keeping the plant's roots intact, which is, you know, kind of important. And let's add more soil to this. All right. All right, so that seems to be pretty good. And I'm gonna give this a healthy watering, but I'm going to move on to the uh, micans. So I think for now I'm gonna leave this one kind of doing its thing, but I have to say I'm kind of tempted to stake it, but for now I'm just gonna let it kind of hang. Um, I am a little bit curious. This one does have quite long air roots, and I might try to increase the humidity on this. Um, that might be a little bit happier with some more humidity. So let's see what the roots are looking like on this guy. Oh, nice. All right, so not as full as the other one, but looking good, nice and fuzzy, which means they're healthy. So same thing, just kind of throw that and hold it in place. Add your soil mix. So if I did want to stake this guy up, I would have to repot him in a slightly larger pot so that I could add the cedar board or stake, whatever I use. Uh, but for now, this guy will be just in here. All right, you get the idea. And I do have this really cool hanging basket, um, but Size wise, it's just this plant is not ready to be in the size of hanging basket. So that's why I'm holding off just for now. Um, maybe once it's a little bit bigger, I'll have to then come to that crossroads again. All right. So I hope you guys found this video to be useful and helpful in terms of whether or not you should be staking your plant and what that all entails. Um, oh yeah, don't forget to give this vi uh, video a thumbs up or better yet, hit that subscribe button. Well, that's it for me. Miss you guys already. Until the next one.